In this video, I'll be making a battery pack from the Samsung EV modules. Each module is made from 12 prismatic 50 amp hour cells connected in series. I'll be connecting two modules together in series to make a 24S 50 amp hour battery pack. The modules will be connected on one end with a copper bus bar and a 3D printed standoff will be placed over it to allow the module to stand on end to provide some clearance. The modules will be held together with threaded rods that are placed through the anchor points on the modules which are meant to be load bearing. There will also be a 3D printed bracket placed on top of the modules which will hold the BMS. There will also be some steel brackets that are attached to the threaded rods and will be used as an anchor point for a handle. The entire thing will be placed in the 3D printed case which has some threaded insert slots to attach the cover. The cover has a space designed to hold the QS10 connector and then there's an insert to keep the connector in place. There's also a space for a voltmeter and battery charge indicator as well as a spot for a button for the BMS on off switch. The first step is to create the balance wire harness for these modules. And if I take off this case, I can access all of the cells here if you remove it. But these modules come with these already pre-made connectors and the values of each cell group are on these wires and, and actually mapped out which ones are which. So all I need to do is take these connectors and then splice the wires to the BMS harness. So here is half of the battery pack with the bracket for the BMS in place. And then this black connector will have the zeroth through the third balance lead on it. So that's gonna go here. And then the BMS will be sitting here on this bracket. And then the first balance lead harness will be attached here, I believe. Well, the first four balance wires will need to attach to this connector here. Now I have this connector spliced to the leads on the balance harness. The next batch of wires are gonna run through that BMS bracket along the back or the middle of the battery pack and I'm gonna have to flatten them out of here rather than bunch them up right now. Then they're gonna connect to this connector here. Now I have that second connector spliced with the balance wires and they are running up along the back of the module and going to that balance connector over there. So here I have my multimeter and the negative terminals connected to the negative terminal of the module. And as I go along, I should see the voltage increase by one cell. And then this last balance wire isn't connected anywhere. This will go to the positive terminal of the first cell group on the other module. Now it's time to do the wiring for the second module. And since this one is connected in series with the other one, it's gonna be oriented the opposite way. So this orange connector will actually be at the top of the battery pack and the BMS will be right here. So these wires need to be shortened because the distance that they have to travel is very short, right to the BMS. But then the black connector is gonna be the one that runs along the inside of the battery pack. Now I have this side completed and these two balance wires are the only ones going to this connector. This blue one will attach to the last balance wire on the other balance wire harness from the other module. Now I just need to connect all of these balance wires, but that's gonna be directly on the other side. Now I've got the balance wires in the second module completed. I've got the second and third cell group going to the first wire on the balance connector, and then the rest are going to all the rest of the cells on this connector. Now let's just do a quick test of the voltages on the balance connector. So they should increase by the voltage of one cell. And then that last red wire goes to the positive terminal of the battery also. So these two have the same voltage. The red wire is used to power the BMS and that second to last balance wire is used to read the voltage of the positive terminal. 
Next, I have the temperature sensors. And I'm thinking them, that I'm gonna place these right here in these slots. There's not a lot of space here once I put the modules together, but I think if I tape these little nodules right in here, there'll be enough room. So I'm gonna put one towards the top and one towards the bottom. There's four of them, so I'll be able to put two on each module. Now I have the balance wires secured in place and they're staggered so that when I press these modules together, they'll be flush to those surfaces and not interfere with each other. So now I have the temperature sensors in place on this module and they're connected to the wires on this side. So here are the other temperature sensors in place and this thing is just about ready to be closed and never see the light of day again. Okay, so now we have the modules connected together and hopefully they're gonna stay that way. And the last thing I need to do is connect this last balance wire. So now with the final balance wire in place, this pack is completely connected in terms of the balance wires. So this is the negative terminal of the first module and the positive terminal of the second module. And I actually need to connect these across. So for that, I made a bus bar out of this copper, uh, well, bus bar. This is actually gonna be a temporary one because as you can see, I didn't really do a great job bending. Both sides should be bent like this, but it was a little bit long, so I had to kind of just do something here. Also, this is 1.5 millimeters in thickness, and I actually found a bus bar that's three millimeters in thickness. So that's gonna give me a lot less resistance. This is covered by a clear heat shrink, so that if the bus bar touches this material, there's no, you know, short or anything. But so for now, this will be good, and then later I'm gonna replace it with one that's better bent and thicker. So that just attaches like this. Here's the whole thing with the threaded rods and terminal covers in place. So now with everything connected, I can test the voltages for all the balance wires. I've got the negative terminal of the multimeter connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So that's the uh, negative terminal also, zero volts. And that's the first cell group. So 86.1 volts is the voltage of the total battery pack. And it's the same for the red balance wire. Here I've removed the B minus wires from the BMS and I've soldered on this new B minus connector. And I didn't film this because it was such a pain. I really, this is like a four gauge wire. And originally I was just gonna use the wire, but because of the distance, um, the solder, when I would solder this, it would seep into the wire and basically solidify it. So what I realized I had to do is just deal with a basically like a solid wire and solder bus bar like this. But the issue is it needed to be exactly the right distance and position to attach to the beam, uh, to the negative terminal of the battery here. So that took quite a bit of work. I went through a bunch of different wires and attempts at this, so I didn't actually film it but basically this is what I ended up with. And because it's rigid, I can't just pop it on with this BMS plate in place. So I have to put the BMS into the bracket and then slide this thing on. And on top of all that, not only does I have to slide on and match to the BMS, but I also had to make it the right distance so that the BMS bracket holes line up over here as well. But I finally got it and it looks like this. So for the P minus terminal of the BMS or C minus as it's labeled here, basically the negative terminal of the battery connector, 
um, I need it to be detachable because the BMS is going to be here basically. And there'll be, this will, this is the positive terminal of the battery. This will attach to the positive terminal of the connector. And of course the negative terminal will be attached to the C minus port over here on the BMS. But that's going to go to a connector that's embedded in the cover here. So that will go right there. And I need to be able to actually like remove this cover because if I just hardwire it, it'll, I'll never be able to remove it again, or it will be really cumbersome. I'll have to kind of like let it, you know, let it hang or something like that. So it'd be really a lot more convenient if I could uh, make the connection and then close the cover. And then if I need to remove the cover, I can just disconnect it here. So this is easily removable because this is just a lug, but for the BMS, there's really no way to make this easily removable. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, instead of soldering a wire here, I'm gonna cut this two millimeter thick copper and just solder the copper to this port so that it sticks out a little bit. And then I'll just drill a hole for another lug. So that way, both the positive and the negative terminals will be removable with just a, like, a regular terminal lug like this. So here's my BMS with that terminal uh, with a little bit of solder there. I have the same thing on my copper bus bar that I made, and I'm just gonna have to solder these two together. I have my soldering iron here, which is about a billion degrees, so this should go pretty smoothly. Okay, here it is. I think that went pretty well. I did have to dump kind of a lot of heat in there, so hopefully it didn't damage anything, but I don't think so. Here's the BMS with the B minus terminal and the P minus terminal connected. So let's throw this thing back on the battery and hope it works. Here's the button. Here's the beep, that's a good sign. Let's just test the voltage. And there we go, that's the correct voltage. All right, now it's time to make a new bus bar for this battery pack. This is the old one that I made. And as you can see, it's this side is good, but I made it a little bit too long. I had to really just kind of grind and bend on this side, so, um, and also this is 1.5 millimeters thick and I wanted to have a thicker bus bar for this battery. So I ordered this three millimeter thick bus bar. I found one that was long enough and now I'm doing the same thing. This is my 3D printed template over here and this fits here perfectly. So if I can get this bus bar to be as perfect as possible to this 3D printed template, then I'm good to go. So I'm using this sheet metal brake, which is not really the best. It's kind of a cheap one. Anytime you try to bend something here, this piece always tends to like slide back and it's hard to keep in place, but it's kind of working. I managed to get this side of it pretty perfectly actually. So this side is really, really good and it matches to the 3D printed template pretty much exactly. But the trick is to get the other side to match. And there we go. I think the other side turned out okay. I actually got it to where it fits really well and I cut this slot in it so that, you know, because if it were like this on both sides, I wouldn't be able to place it on the battery pack. So I think I did an okay job of cutting that slot. It's a little bit rough, but that's good enough. Most importantly, this fits pretty much perfectly. So place it over here and then this slots on on this side. And you can see that there's full contact on both sides. There's, it's not too short or too long. It's pretty much perfect. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Actually really surprised 
that it turned out this well. Here is the bus bar in place on the battery pack. I have it wrapped with some clear heat shrink to insulate it. And then also I wrapped the balance wires with some electrical tape and placed some electrical tape on the, on the bottom here just to insulate it. Uh, I can imagine what sort of situation might occur where the balance wires would short against this cover, but of course I wanna take as much precaution as possible. Plus it'll, it helps to keep them together. But then I can just take this standoff bracket, which attaches right here. And then the threaded rods would be passed through this way. And then of course the screws would tighten on each side. Here's this side of the battery pack finally completed. I've got the threaded rods through and on this side I welded the bolts to the rods so that I can hold this piece as I turn the other one without the thread turning inside this screw. So these are welded in place and then these are using locking nuts and they also put some blue Loctite in there. So this side of the battery pack is ready to go. Here's the battery pack with the BMS in its final place. And you can see it's just a little lopsided because this piece here is a solid wire that's filled with solder. I couldn't get it to be flexible because it's so short. So when I put solder into it, it seeped through the entire wire and I had to make it, you know, just the right angle, but I missed by just a little bit and I don't want to put more tension on it to bend it. So the BMS actually is able to be kind of pushed into place. There's enough flexibility to hopefully not damage anything. I don't think it will. Pretty easy to push down. And then when the cover is on, the cover is actually gonna be the thing pressing this down. So the next thing I realized is that if I have this in the case, the case is gonna come up to all the way here and there's gonna be no way that I can place any sort of lug onto this. So this is gonna be covered like this. So even if I can fit a lug in there and get it on, this terminal, there's no way that I'll be able to remove this nut and tighten it down. So what I devised is just another bus bar and that's gonna go here. And then I can take a terminal lug and that will connect here. This is a nice thick copper three millimeter bus bar. So way overkill for this distance. And I just have like a little insulator cover right now because I did electrocute myself on this yesterday. The other thing I realized is once I put this in a case and put a cover on it, it's going to be really difficult to lift it because right now I can place threaded rods through here and this is a great anchor point. These are designed to be weight bearing so you can lift it by the threaded rods if they go all the way through but I want these to be fitted and I want the case to be over here. So once the case is on there, basically once it looks like that, this thing weighs about 50 pounds and it's gonna be pretty difficult to try to like hold it and maneuver it and especially difficult to actually put it into the bike by holding it from the sides. And then it'll be even more difficult to actually remove it once it's in there. So the solution I came up with are some steel, I made some steel, uh, brackets like this and they have a screw that I welded through the bottom and then these will be placed right here so I fitted them to be pretty much exactly like a perfect snug fit that goes right here and then the threaded rods will go through here to the other side so you know then the screws obviously go on the ends here and this is a nice three millimeter thick piece of steel so then these will protrude through the cover actually I didn't want to make a hole in the cover because I want it to be you know as waterproof as possible but I could put some sealant around the hole just to really seal it once it's on there so these will go through the cover and then this can act as an anchor point for a handle that I can place here and I'll be able to actually top load this like a normal battery pack but for now, what I also did so that I can actually lift this for the time being is I made this uh, very janky, sloppily welded together kind of bracket thing. And then this will sit 
right there. I think I adjust these to make it even. So that's actually really solid. You can actually lift this by the threaded rod over here and it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy. Next step for this build is to solder the wires to this QS10 connector. It's a pretty hefty connector. And I'm gonna be using six gauge wires here. This is actually smaller than I initially wanted to use. I wanted to use four gauge wires, but the four gauge wires are just not flexible enough. They're just too big and they're not really gonna fit under the case the way I need it to. There's just not gonna be enough flexibility. So I have to settle for six. There'll be a little bit more resistance, but these are gonna be really short wires, probably like this short. So a six gauge wire that's this short is gonna have the same or less resistance than a four gauge wire that's long enough to run from the battery pack to the controller, let's say. So I don't think this will be a bottleneck. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Next thing I'm gonna do is add this extra small wire in parallel with the connectors. So I have an extra lead to measure the voltage using the display that I'm gonna be embedding into the cover. All right, here are those wires in place. They're just soldered to the terminals, to the solder that's already there. I just removed the connector for now so I could put on some heat shrink. Now we have that piece complete. You can see the two wires are in parallel with this connector that's going to this type of JST connector. I don't know what kind of JST connector this is, but uh, that will go here. Then the other side is here, and that's gonna be attached to this voltage display. Next, I'll be crimping the terminal lugs onto the ends of these wires. And for that, I'm using this hydraulic crimping tool. So I'm gonna place these on here and then you place it into the tool and ratchet the handle down to crimp it. All right, here's the main discharge connector completed. You can see I have the terminal lugs on each of the wires. Then this is the wire for the voltage display, and this fits inside the cover. So let's mock that up real quick, just make sure that it fits. Right here's the cover, and here are the wires being passed through. This, of course, is the wire for the display, the voltage display. There's also a button here that's being passed through with the same type of connector. This would be for the on-off switch for the VMS. And here is the display, the voltage display. And that will be here. I'm not going to push it down all the way because it's difficult to remove. So that's basically going to be the top of the battery pack. So that's all of the wiring under the cover. All right, now I have pretty much everything ready to go with this module. I've got some Kapton tape here. It's not so important that it's kind of messy. The cover is gonna go here. This is just to hold the wires in place right there when the cover goes on. And then I have my temporary crappy handle in place. And the reason I have it in place is because now it's time to put it into the case. So there it is, there's the case with everything in place.
Now all that's left to do is place it on the battery pack. And here it is with everything connected. You've got the positive wire going to the positive bus bar. You've got the negative wire back there. And all of the connections are made for the on off switch and the voltage display. And they're just tucked away in that recess. So now the last thing to do is to just fold this over and tuck everything into that recess and close this cover. And there it is fully assembled. I think it looks really good, but right now let's turn it on. You can hear the beep from the BMS and then this is the voltage display. So 94.6 volts, so that's great. I actually, there are other functions here. I'm not sure how to use them, but all of that is working. So that's it, mission accomplished. This battery pack is done. Here it is on the scale, and this thing is not the lightest battery pack. Comes in at 58.83 pounds. That's a huge bitch!